Welcome everyone to season two of two. Six Feet Apart with Sean and TJ <laughs> coming to you as always from the friendly confines of Felix E. Martin Jr. Hall in Greenville, Kentucky. Brought to you today by Greenville Tourism. We give them a big thanks for uh, their support throughout this past year along with all of our uh, sponsors. Well, starting off season two the same way we started same off season way. one. That's right. <laughs> uh, so we are students of history here. So we're uh, <laughs> proud to bring back our uh, superintendent of schools here in Millenburg County, Mr. Robbie Davis. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you both, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm sure you've had nothing going on in the last, uh, since we last talked. So uh, uh, what was the subject last time? Was it COVID, right? I That's think right. Uh, we may repeat ourselves right. a little bit. Little bit but, uh, <laughs> this may be a bit of a rerun. Yeah. Uh, but things have changed, obviously. A um, lot of the same, but we have learned some things and and new new issues keep popping up. You know, yeah. you, you feel like you, you've kind of learned, you've worked through some things and you get to a point where you feel, all right, we, we can do this. And then, you know, there's always new issues no matter what you do, that's, that's what it's been. And it's, I know it's been a struggle for parents, for kids, uh, for our staff. I do want to start by saying there are so many parents, so many community members and folks who have been super supportive. And I know they're frustrated and I know they want it to be better. We do too. We want our kids in school every bit as bad as, badly as you do. And so I do appreciate our community, even though I know personally they've got things going on and they want their kids in school. And and I think all in all, our folks have been pretty good to us. And, and I, what I ask you to do, if you have issues with things, is call the school. Let us know. If we're not reaching out in the right way or you need something, we will do as best we can to meet you halfway or more than halfway. Our, our big concern continues to be, I mean, the many big concerns, but one are the kids that we're just not able to connect with. And you know, we want to connect. So if someone says, hey, you need to let us know what you need, whether it's a Chromebook, we'll try to help with that. Wi-Fi, we'll try to help with that. Obviously, we're doing a lot of feeding. We'll continue to do that. But, you know, this is, this is new to us as well. And we don't want it to ever be said that, hey, you didn't try. You didn't reach out to my kid. We want to reach your kid. Surely there's not anybody out there who can say that the school system's not trying because, my goodness. Well, I mean, we see it every day, but. Yeah. Well, we're a little biased, and I know, right. we're, we're not, I know we're not perfect. Some folks just don't have good connection. It's just it's so true. difficult to, to do this, at, at, you know, at a distance. So, undoubtedly, what we need is our kids back in school. I, I totally understand. And we needed to be able to do that with the mandates we have, the executive orders we have, the health guidelines we have. And do we have enough staffing, which is something we can talk about here in a little bit, you know, moving forward. But I, I did want to say that I, I want to take the opportunity to say for all the folks who are saying, hey, we're praying for you. We're pulling for you. We appreciate you. Even if you're not right, doing exactly what we think you should be doing in the way we think it should be done. Uh, folks out there have been supportive. And, and I, I personally appreciate it. And I know a lot of our folks do, too. Well, and so on that note, what do you the rest of the month? In February, what do you think? What's that look like? You think for our kids possibly getting back? And well, I really wanted to go next week. Right. I was hoping so badly we could get in next week because I mean, every day with a kid is a big deal. And when we get them in, 
we can accomplish a lot. It's just it's getting him, being able to get them in. Uh, we simply couldn't next week because of our staff. It was, you know, I mean, obviously you worry about the safety of it all. Can we do this? But we've got all these guidelines that are really pretty safe. And if we stay inside those guidelines, we feel like we're doing things the right way. I talked to Kathy Bethel from the health department pretty much daily. The problem next week is we, we simply have too many staff members either positive or more than that quarantined. And when you've got a super high number of, of quarantine folks and you don't have subs because you just don't have any subs this year anyway, and they're quarantined. So our numbers obviously are higher than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of anticipated a post-Christmas surge. We're, we're, I'm hoping we're seeing that now and we'll start dropping down some. So to answer your question, TJ, I think we're going to have to be super flexible moving forward January and February would be my guess. And what I'll ask our folks, and this is our staff and the parents out there with their kids, it may change week to week. And there may be weeks where we can only run elementary. But we have staffing to do that. We're fine to do that. Transportation to do elementary, but we can't the others. Then I want to be able to just do elementary. It may be the it may be the where we have high school. I, it could change. I don't like that. It's hard for people to plan for, well, this week and then this week. The only thing I could say safely if I wanted to, is to say, all right, we're just going to shut down January and February. That's the only thing I could say and be certain that we could do that. I don't want to do that. I want to get our kids in each week, each day that we can. So I think at the end of each week, on Thursday or Friday, we'll see where we are. And if we're able to safely run and have the staff to run, then we'll make the announcement and I ask parents to try to roll with us again. And again, it could be only one school is down could be one grade level is down. We have the ability to do that where we didn't in the past. Snow day was always all or nothing. Well, this could be where we're more targeted <clears throat> if we have to be down. Maybe it's, you know, one school is hit pretty hard with quarantines, but we're good the rest of the district. Then, uh, then we may very well run the rest of the district. That's not perfect. Again, parents understand that. But if we're going to try to go in January and February, it feels like that's what it's going to have to be like. So that's going forward. I, it looks like maybe the next couple of months, that may be what we need to do. Uh, we're hoping, Kathy Bethel again, talking with her, that maybe our numbers will start declining next week. We would kind of get out from Christmas. And so maybe that'll start going down some. And hopefully, well, the day after Martin Luther King, a week from Tuesday, I would hope we can get our kids back in on an A-B schedule with the goal, obviously, to be four or five days as soon as we can. So you, you brought it up, but that's uh, a little different situation, obviously, this year since we've been virtual a lot of the time anyway. But what about snow days? What's, how does that look, what's that look like in 2021? Feels like there's a lot of jokes there, doesn't it? A snow yeah. day when you're already virtual. I remember you saying you, you miss the simplicity of a snow day. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. yeah, I do. I, I may not miss getting up at uh, 3.30 in the morning to check the roads and right. all, but it, if we're back in school or if we're virtual, let's just take this week. Or maybe, you know, if a couple of weeks from now for A, B, and it snows. My thinking is now, and I, I want to tie this into some other things we may talk about. If it snows and the buses are supposed to run and they can't, we'll, we will likely go to just straight virtual. We're already doing it now. We haven't done that in the past. NTI days, some districts had them before. We didn't. I wasn't a big believer in them. It didn't feel like we could really serve our kids very well then. We're in a little better shape now. Now that we have the Chromebooks, now that we're doing a lot of this anyway, so we will likely just roll that straight into a virtual day. If we're already virtual, you know, we're still virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not bring in small groups that day. Because even now, even when we're down, we're bringing in groups of kids, small groups, you know, and working with them. We may have to cut that out, but we'll simply work with them at home. That's my thinking now. And we'll talk more why, but that would put us out in like mid-May. If we go ahead and just don't take snow days, we simply work with them in a virtual manner. So my my thoughts are now, that's likely what we're going to do. And I'm open to change. I'm, we're looking at different options. But we'll probably just essentially use NTI days when it snows. And even though we're already home, it seems kind of funny to say that. That's where we are. Well, it's not just because it's not just kids, too. You've got staff that right now are coming in right. and teaching from so you got to think about them traveling too. So right, and and they may need to be able to. Can they work from home? Right. 
do they have the ability to connect with their kids from home? Well, that's what other districts have done for years. The ones who had NTI days already, you know, they simply did that. If it snows half an inch and it's just one of those days, it's just kind of tricky, most staff will come in. If it snows five inches, most staff will not come in. So can you serve your kids from home? I think we're in much better position to do that now. So I'm more comfortable doing that now than I have been in the past. I don't think we were able to do that. Yeah. Will we get through the winter and, and potential snow and other things and hopefully numbers start to drop back down? And do you foresee it being possible to get back to a four or five day a week schedule um, by the end of the year? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that that will happen now. I'd like to say sooner rather than later. I, I don't know how soon that'll be. Obviously, I can't control what what what's happening with our numbers and all. But yes, I, I, I definitely do. And, and that's that's something to consider with snow days. The, the offset of that would be, do you take a snow day now, tag that day on to the end of the year when you're likely to be five days a week? So where now you, you can't get them in, but if you did take the snow day now, you know, maybe maybe you'd be five days a week by hopefully March, you know, maybe, maybe February. So that's, that's kind of what we're working through. But as of now, we'll, we'll take it. The snow day will just turn into an NTI day. That's where we're at now. But yes, yes, yes. Four or five do days a week is absolutely the go. I cannot wait till we can get back and do that. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll be no, nice but, to, uh, yeah. to have the halls not so silent. Yeah. No uh, kidding. Hearing kids laugh and talk and stuff that, uh, we haven't heard it in a long time. Is the best medicine that we can have. Yeah, because all we hear right now is fits running up down the hall. And <laughs> it's getting yeah. old, I'm telling you. That got old like first morning, right. probably March yeah. 10th or whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, but absolutely, getting the kids back in, even the small groups, being able to see kids and and hearing them laugh and go on and all. It's just it's good for them, I know, but I think it's much better for us probably even than it is for them. What there about are some, like you mentioned, those small groups, there are some things going on. You know, we, we're looking at, our winter sports, uh, our our drama, all right? Red Coming home. here from Martin Hall, right. uh, you know some things that we're just sort of following the the guidelines and the parameters that are put in place from local health department, from the state, and things right now to to try and get those things going. So uh, the it is happening slowly, I guess. It's, well, you know those are those are a lot of tough calls and. And there's so many things now that reasonable people can disagree. You know, when, when you make a decision to, to have sports or, or to not, or to A, B, or to not, you know, what's so tough about this is reasonable people can, can see the other side and say you shouldn't be doing this or you should be doing this, and you get their point. I mean, they're, they're, it, there's not as much black and white as I would like. We're mm -hmm. living in this, I've said it before, this big gray area. And at the end of the day, you take all this information and you balance the needs of your kids and the safety of your kids and, and the safety of your staff, and then you have to make a call. And I understand people that disagree with that. Now, I've been fortunate. People that have done that, be it staff or parents or whoever, have been respectful in the way they've done that, at least to me. I don't have Facebook. Uh, and I appreciate that. We're decided, you know, next week we are not going because I don't have the staff to do it, but we are going to play sports we're going to have sports games if we can where i finally landed on is let's just do what we can for the kids it's just all from what we can and if we can't have school because i don't have the staff to have school but we are able to play a game in a way that is super safe with super low numbers maybe only parents is kind of where we're at or have it have a play and just the parents come in and we can do that following all these guidelines then let's do it for them that's kind of where I am now. There may be times where we're in school, but we can't play sports. I have a team quarantine or something along those lines. So I, I respect anybody that says, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Are you doing that wrong? Yeah, you may be right. You know, at the end of the day, you make a call. And I just, I want to, I want to serve a kid. And I, I know how big a deal it is to, if, if you're in drama or if, if you're in archery or you have a game, you know, that's good for your mental health, not just your physical health. When we can bring in small groups, even if it's just a few kids, that's a few kids that get to do something. We get to see them and, and we're helping them out. So, you know, I, I've been back and forth on that. And I understand people out there that will question all that. That's not a simple answer. But what I want to do now is if I can, again, if I can have four elementaries in and maybe not the fifth one, then maybe I do try to bring those four in, serve those kids. 
So when our numbers are like they are now with the quarantine, it, it just pretty much prohibits that. Mm -hmm. But I'm hopeful we're going to start seeing a drop. But I've been hopeful for a week, and it hasn't happened yet, so right. maybe it will soon. So if we can get through this school year, uh, there's a lot to think about for the fall. Um, what kind of calendar are we looking for for 21-22? I know that we're just now through the first week of 21, but. Uh, well, it's time. I mean, it, it's time to start having that conversation. And I will say, and I want to continue to say, it, it's, it's tough as it's being better days are ahead. And, and we've learned some things through this and, and we will persevere. I want to say that, you know, just parents hang in there. Uh, we, we are going to do everything we can to get your kids back where they need to be. Just work with us. Just, just, just do your best at home. We know we have, when the dust settles, we have issues we need to address. And we're already talking about what may that look like? As far as the calendar goes, let me let me be careful what I say here, because there there's it's time number one, and, and they're working on it. Our DPP, Lee Freeman, he's got the committee together, and they'll be getting together and talking about the calendar. But understand there is a process to that, and they will make some proposals, and ultimately the board will make the final call on accepting a calendar, and that may be. It may be as late as March. Uh, we need to do it as soon as possible, but the fact is we don't know what next year's gonna look like and the longer, kind of one of those balances, the longer you wait, the better idea you have of what you're facing. Is COVID gonna be an issue in the fall, next year? That's, that's the thing, yeah. is COVID gonna be an issue? And we don't know. So what we're probably gonna do is bring two calendars, get two calendars together. One, which starts old school, like it used to be, well, Old old school is late late August. <laughs> late August, yeah. Uh, so then the now the latest old school would be starting early August. Now, I'm typically in favor of that I want our kids to have as many days in as we can get them because they've missed so much, and that's a little bit longer calendar year. The other one would be bringing them in late August, like we did this year with the variable calendar, very similar calendar to this year. So, if we thought COVID was going to be an issue. The, the later calendar is better again. It buys you three more weeks to for it to get back. We, the same thing we did this year. So but what I think we can do for parents and for our staff is to, all right, regardless of which calendar we start with or we, we have, we'll have the same proposal for fall break, the same proposal for spring break. Because I think as a parent, that's what I wanted to know more. You know, I worked outside the school system for a lot of years. And I, wanted, I just want to know, right, when's your fall break? Gretchen was the teacher. I wasn't. And tell me when your fall break is, I'll try to schedule my vacation to match yours. So you know, I talked to, talked to Lee Freeman again, and he was like, all right, what you can say is this. Well, you know, we're looking at that October 4th through 8th. Again, I don't make the call, but that's, that's what we're looking at now. If the calendar committee approves that and the board does, that would be the same regardless. And I think the spring one is, I think it's April 4th through 8th. It's, it's, it's that little time frame there. I may be off by day. Those would likely be the same either, either calendar. Having said that, say it again and again and again. You know, I'm not making that call now, that committee, but that's what Lee's working on to present to the committee. And then if they're okay, present it to the board. Well, any Definite information I think parents can get uh, is, is welcomed. And so at least knowing when the breaks are, and regardless of when classes start and, and when right. they get out. I, I know a lot things. of folks, you know, they, they, they set their vacations about now. So yep. the sooner we can get that out, we'll talk some of it the next board meeting. So I'm getting out in front of it a little bit because, again, it's such a tricky time. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think we're more likely to start on a later date. But I, that is that is still up in the air. And we can talk about facilities maybe here in just a little bit. That kind of ties into that as well. Right. Well, before we get <clears throat> before we get into facilities, and, and you've said it throughout our conversation, I think, but I, I, I know we, he and I have talked it this past 10 or 11 months, whatever it's been, uh, there's been a definite few jobs around that we would want. And I think yours is one of them just because of all the headache and hard decisions and probably sleepless hours you've had. Um, uh, what there there's parents out there i mean i'm one of them i'm fortunate my kids are older there's a lot of staff out there too with little kids and we talked about being flexible you know a lot because there's a lot of things still up in the air what I'm, 
what do you say to them? Because I, I don't know they're they get frustrated just like everybody else does. Like I, they're trying to set their work schedule and trying to find sitters and and handle through all that. And it's you know COVID fatigue or whatever. We're just tired. I mean, what just if you could just tell them what do you want to say to them? I understand. I mean, I, you know, I understand, and, and it's not that we don't get that. We do. It weighs on. I wish I could say, here's exactly what we're going to do. I was hoping before Christmas I could say, all right, guys, here's what we're going to do after Thanksgiving. You know, we're going to do three weeks of, you know, maybe if I just brought elementary and I really worry about my kindergarten, really worry about my first graders, all of them, but that you're learning to read. And then your seniors are another group that really just hurts you, you know, the whole time they're missing. So I understand that that, yeah. that goes into it. It's just it's very difficult to sit out a schedule that I can promise you is going to happen. We're just hang in there. We're just hang in yeah, there. Yeah, and that's, you know, hang in there doesn't really help anybody. Nobody right. wants to hear hang in there. That's rarely a good thing. We're in this together. I, I get it. It's not us against you. I'm not trying to mess your schedule up. I get it. You know, I'm a grandparent. I have a, I have a, a nephew in school. Now, I understand that. And I, I don't, as soon as we can make that better, we can be you know, definite about something. But it, it may be a bit. I mean, COVID stinks, and it stinks on a personal level at home and, and at work, and, and it does for everybody out there. Yeah, th my job can be tough, but, you know, look at the healthcare work. You know, look at look at all our other folks that are – there's just so many jobs that are tough right now, and, and there's so much uncertainty at home, and I get that. I have, you know, COVID fatigue. I have to keep – all right, you got to stay positive. You got to stay consistent. That's That's my job. But I get it. You know, when you can't go in, you don't necessarily go in uh, your mom's house for Christmas. You know, you do something a little different or you're, you're not traveling as much or just seeing the folk you need to see. It's not just at work that everybody, whether you're a school teacher or a bus driver or whatever, it's at home too. So there's no yeah. getting away from it. It affects everything we do. Right. But we were talking before we started filming about history and some of the similarities with things that have happened in the past and that you can draw, you know, lines to today or whatever, just, you know, thinking about maybe World War II or the Great Depression and all the sacrifices that all those people had to make as a country like we are now, you know, inside their communities and the country as a whole. But eventually we got through it. We just had to, we had to work together like you're talking about, stick together. And you're right, hang in there does kind of suck to say, but it's the best words I got. But you know, I so many people have stepped up. It's true. It's and, true. And that's, I, I'm so impressed with so many people that have, you know, because we just want to scream and yell and be mad, you know, and we all feel it, every one of us. Some of us handle it better than others. So I am, I, I am proud of, you know, like, homie, he ain't even start. I mean, you know, but like, take our bus driver, take our food service folks, and, and the teachers. I'm telling you, it's hard to teach kids here and at home. I mean, there's just no easy way, and so you can't be as good at either. And so now you're you're feeling like you're not doing your job well. It's not that we don't care; it's the reason we're so stressed that we do care. And and all the folks out there doing this sort of thing, there's so many have stepped up. Be it our nurses and our doctors, or you know, just parents being awesome parents. So yeah, there's a lot of folks out there that are just you know they're so sick of it, they may not handle it well. A lot of people have really stepped up, and I think when this the dust settles, we'll look at those folks and say, "Wow, pretty impressive yep. that you were able to do what you did through all that." Yeah. Uh, but you know what you said about the parent? I wish I could say something to the parents that would, oh, okay, he's got a plan. He's, I do have a plan, but it it, it changes more than I want it to. Uncertainty is hard. It's more of a flow chart, I guess. If yeah. this happens, then, we're this, gonna then this right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the way it feels, and none of us yeah. like to be there. No. But when it all is over, we're going to have Chromebooks. All kids will. We've learned things we didn't know before. We'll be better than we've ever been before. We just have to get there. Through that. And we will. And we will. Yeah, there there have been things that have come out of all this that we've realized are going to be great things to have in addition to quote unquote normal uh, situations. You know, some of the things that we've done here. Mm -hmm. uh this the show for example uh and some of the the video projects and the marketing projects and things that we've done and finding ways to keep people involved and informed you know those are things that we're going to keep doing even if things are more open and more like they used to be curbside service is pretty nice 
sometimes. You just yeah. you call and it's ready and you just go, you know, pick it up and go. And and if I if I need to have a meeting now with someone, instead of having to bring everybody in and pull them from the schools and all that, hey guys, give me fifteen minutes at one o'clock. Will you do a Zoom meeting? Yeah. If I if I can do a Zoom meeting, anyone can do a Zoom meeting. <laughs> so we have we have learned some things. You know, that's what you, we just have to continue to be positive. And but the, for some folks, right now it's, it, for me, it's been it's hard. It's inconvenient. I hate not seeing my mom. But you know, I've been I've been fortunate that I don't have death in the family. I've been fortunate that I haven't had to deal with some some things that some folks had to deal with, and we do need to to remember that. I mean, this is some families are impacted to a level that I can't even understand. So that's why I can't feel sorry for myself. Yeah, it's gone so far beyond a minor inconvenience for so many people right, right. that uh, it, can't lose sight of that. Yeah, and, and so you, you just can't get sight. At the end of the day, uh, there are folks that have been impacted at the greatest level. You know, I want to understand, and our kids then are impacted. Maybe it's the kids, maybe it's mom, memo. We got to deal with all that when we when we get them back, or even now, mental health. I keep saying that, but I know I know how real that is. You know, so that is the top of our list on how do we serve those kids, not just who have disconnected from us, but maybe they've got something going on at home that they really need us. They need the services we can provide, and it's really difficult to do when we're not seeing them. That, that's that's what weighs on me too. Every day we don't have those, those kids in school. We're denying them something I know they need. Let's find something uh, positive that we can talk about moving forward. Uh, let's we start back in the fall. There's possibility of some big changes. And uh, well, I was going to say it's not UK basketball. Uh, <laughs> I, that no. has not been a good relief for me. I, I needed that, and I no. didn't get it. Well, you didn't get it from our okay. Cowboys, and doesn't no. not getting it from uh, Wildcats either. My sports either. teams, I've, I've chosen unwisely during a during a pandemic. But yeah, uh, let's talk facilities a little bit, and and uh, that's another one of those things I need to say very carefully because there's a process that I don't want to pretend that I'm just willing it into action, but. What we're looking at, we're working now on our, our district facilities plan, which we have to do every every so often. And there's a committee that, that's already been brought together one time. And it's not a committee I choose of my buddies. It's a committee that has so many parents and so many business leaders and so many staff members and all this. And we look at, can, you know, just what do we want to do with our facilities? But what I can tell you, what I'm, I've proposed, and I, I've talked about this for a year, is to try to get our kids, all our high school kids here at West Campus. That's something that that really wasn't even possible four or five years ago, maybe even three, because we had too many kids we'd had to build on. And cost is always a problem and dealing with we don't have a lot of extra money to expend. Unfortunately, because we we lose our population is going down, we're now able to consider this. So what I'm what I'm proposing is that we we bring all of our kids, and, and next year is a possibility. And, and I don't know. We're just pushing as hard as we can to see what happens. But can we get all of our kids over here on West Campus? I truly believe, let me say this now, I believe it's best for our kids. I believe it's best for our staff. 9 through 12. All of our nine, kids, 9 through 12. Yeah, yeah. not K through 12. Right. Nine We're not bringing K through 12 over here. All of our high school kids, thank you. Uh, I think... I think our kids want that. I've talked to a bunch of them. I think it's good for them. I think our staff does by and large. I think our community parents do. I feel like it would be a win on many levels. Following that, if we're able to move them over, the next move that I'll propose is to move South Middle kids to East or everybody to East. South Middle is one of our oldest buildings. Uh, we've got a couple of HVAC units sitting on top there that's pretty much being held together by duct tape right now. So. That seems like the com the common sense move following that, and you would probably just close South Middle at that point. Maybe some other things could happen, maybe not. That's basically what I'm going to propose. So let's talk about how that works. Again, isn't just isn't me doing it in the dark and all of a sudden, bam, it happens. There's that committee that we have together. They're led by an architect that is in contact with the State Department, and then we'll just talk it through. We'll look at the numbers of it. We'll We'll dig in uh, dollar sign wise, and how's it going to? How will this help our kids? Uh, you know, will it really help our kids? Let's have that discussion. 
if they decide at the end of the day, hey, this seems like a reasonable thing. This is good. Let's do this. We'll put that into a plan led by that architect who knows how to word it and set it up. That'll then go to the, to the State Department. And, and that's kind of our hold up right now is getting our State Department to move on some things. But once it goes there, they look at the plan and they'll either say, yeah, that, that'll work or, or no, it won't work because of this. Now, the architect leads us because he knows what the State Department's looking for. He knows how many you can get in this room, how many, all this kind. He knows all that, how much floor space you need. If they then approve it, it comes back to us and it goes to our board. And then our board is the ultimate one. At any, any point, it could stop. So there's the whole process that will play out over the next two to three months, probably. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason, going back to the calendar, if we think there's a reasonable chance that's going to happen, I want as big a long a summer as I can have. Because when you're talking about moving mm -hmm. all those that staff at East to here, then moving everybody at South Middle to East, it's going to take a while. So that's where it'd be really nice to have those extra three weeks. So that's why I'm thinking that calendar could happen. Now, is this going to happen next year? I don't know. If everything goes right, could this happen next year? Probably. You know, it's one of those we don't know. We're just going to continue to, to plan and try and, and, and work towards it. So if everything does happen as we want it to, we're able to move on forward. So right now we're planning what would scheduling look like at the high school if they're all on one campus. And, you know, how would you go about the moving? How are we going to pay for this? All these types of things because the one cost that we're going to, going to pick up is we'll have to build onto this cafeteria. Now, when you close a school, you save money. That's nice. This isn't about the money as much. I mean, that's a, we always have to think that. That's my job. I think it's best for kids. I think our kids will benefit here. I'm excited to see them on one campus and make those relationships for four years and not have to travel back and forth and all these things. You know, so that's something that just keep an eye on. Parents keep an eye on. You know, I, I'm for it. I want it to happen. If we get in, in into the weeds and we, we may see we need another year. We need to back up and punt and let's let's revisit it and see if we can if it can happen year after next. But right now it's it we are moving forth as if that's a possibility. And we've had the State Department in on meetings. We had the architect. I talked to him again today. We met on it again today. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that maybe that can happen. I'm hopeful that's a win for our community, that we have support and they feel the way I do. You know, I'm, I'm sure not everybody's ever going to do that, but that's something that we're, we're strongly looking at. But I, I just have to say that as carefully as I can, that it's, oh, he's just going to make that happen. No, I'm going to propose it. And, and then hopefully all those committees and all those steps, we can check those boxes off and then we have time to make it work. If not, again, we're going to push as far as we can. If we hit a snag or we hit a roadblock or we hit a no, okay, can't do it next year, that's fine. We'll, we'll try the year after next. So the, the next few months is when you sort of get a, a better idea of seeing how those progression. Yeah, and we have to, I mean, because it's kind of run out of time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're getting to the crunch. Into I think our next committee meeting, possibly, you know, I, I talked to our, our architect today, maybe in a couple of weeks or so. And once that starts, then they meet and, you know, again, I don't have all the exact rules you go by. We'll be led through that. But you can meet every couple of weeks. Then you have a public hearing in there where, you know, folks can come in and say their piece. And, uh, once we settle it out, if we get to the point, yeah, that's what our community wants. Yeah, that's what we want. And then it goes to the state, and again, they could they could reject it for some reason. But they've been pretty involved all along. They know what we're thinking. So we're like, if, if we're not thinking right right now, if you're going to shut us down on it, please tell us now what we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So you hope that that would happen, and then, you know, ultimately, again, the final say is is the five folks on our board. And then if that happens, you know, then then we start. Okay, let's get into the the details and uh, of this. But we're already trying to talk that. So if that does happen, we're not just waiting around till March. Oh, okay, let's do it. We're talking it now, like it may happen, just in case it does. Hey, and you addressed it with us in a in that meeting a few weeks ago with staff. Um, but you're you're right. I, 
I, and I agree. I think it is best for the kids. It's good for me because I'll have both my kids here, you know, all the time, and they get to grow up freshmen through, and you're right, build relationships for four years in one building. But I think it is important, too. It, it, it is going to save the district money, right? I mean, logistically with school buses and all that. You'll and save on transportation. And you're going to do all that without having to cut staff other than through attrition, normal attrition, that, right? That's the plan. and uh, Which is awesome. Yeah. It's great. It, it, it really is one of those things that seems like kind of a win, win, win. Now, I'm sure once we start digging in, there's going to be snags we're going to have to work through. It's nothing's ever simple. But, yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the possibility of that. I'm excited about seeing all our kids uh, on one campus and get to know a kid as a freshman and know them all the way through. And every single connection you have with a kid, you just think of, you know, the kids you know well, TJ. Uh, when you know them for four years, you know, you're there for them. Oh, yeah, you can tell by looking at them whether they need you. Or not. You can, you know, you're. It's harder to do when it's two years at a time. And we do the when I talk to kids, that's one of the things they bring up. You know, I get to know a teacher. I like them. I get to know this, you know, this uh, front office lady, and I like her, and I can talk to her. And then, about the time I get to know her really well, I'm moving on. And at this point in time, it's so important for those kids to have that anchor, if you will, and that that sense of comfort and, and peace that they, they have and, and feeling like like they know someone or that they've got somebody there who cares. It's important for us. Yeah. I mean, you know it's important for kids. And that's something we talk all the time is, you know, are there kids going through that we don't know like we should know? You know are there, and, and it's harder it's harder to make those connections, you know, when it's when it's two and two versus four years. Right. So yeah, that's something that uh, I'm excited about, and I'm excited about the possibility of it. That's that's one of those bright spots I think about. I just don't I don't know for sure if we can if we can make. I don't want to do it in a rushed way that that it's it's best if you wait. I don't want to just. I'm so bound and determined, and even if they say yes, we're going to do it no matter what. I don't want to do that. I, I want to have enough common sense and enough just. Take a breath. If, if if we truly need, even if everybody is on board and we truly need to wait a year, then let's wait a year. But when you think it's best for kids, that's a whole group of kids. If you wait a year, that's not getting that. So that's why I'm thinking let's let's push for it to happen. And and if I have agreement on all those folks and, and we can do it, then let's do it. You know, uh, it's not easy moving. That's going to be. We did it at Bremen. It's fantastic getting a new school. I was the principal there when we did it. It was a headache. Uh, a lot of stuff to do in there. We just moved 100 feet. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of stuff too and a lot of people involved, but we can do it. Yeah. And it, it is, I think, going to be a, a good thing and it's something that is exciting to think about the possibilities. And, it, and it's exactly what it is right now, possibilities. So, you know, there's, if, if we look at it, we come up with a better plan. If, if folks come out and say, what about this? What about that? Uh, we have to consider. I don't want to be so sold this way it has to be. You know, let's get a lot of folks' voices in there and, and see what they think and certainly hear what kids have to say, too. You know, down the road, the question I get some is, you know, what about putting the middle schools together? That, that may, and again, they could decide that now, although that's nothing that I'm proposing at this point. Could that happen at some point at East? There will be room at some point. When our numbers get smaller, I think it would be easier. I'm not proposing that now. Could that happen down the road? Yeah, you know, very well could. Um, that's not going to be part of what I'm proposing now. So if that's out there, hey, because you hear everything. People, people sometimes uh, get the facts screwed up a little bit. But could that happen now? I don't see it. Could it happen down the road? Yeah, that would be for another another facilities plan in a few years is, is kind of what I'm thinking. So if you get that question, or am I trying to put the middle schools together at this point? That's not what I'm proposing. Anything that we haven't talked about today that uh, you want to make sure people, people know? I, I, I know that speaking for myself as a staff member, I appreciate your, your communication and, uh, and keeping us informed of what's going on and uh, that you are willing to listen and open to suggestions. Just want folks to know, uh, staff or parents or whatever kids, they're on our mind. 
we're trying we are trying our best to take everything that we are hit with and make the best decisions we can for them. I understand where you're coming from. I understand if you disagree. Uh, there's room for that. There's things I would have done differently looking back. You know, absolutely. Our goal is to get kids in the building and do it in the safest way possible. So don't think we don't want to do that. Don't think that that's not important. That is the most important thing. It, so keep trying to bear with us. We appreciate you. Appreciate everything you've done. If you need more from us or we're not reaching out in some way, call the school, call the board, and we will try to provide whatever we can. We will meet you at least halfway, if not 90% of the way. Just, you know, and, and to the ones who may see this, that your child is just, just not connecting with us. And we've got, we've got several of those. That's a real, real worry. That I lose sleep over that one. These kids that we just can't get them to, to tune in at all. All right, it's never too late. Start, start tomorrow. You know, reach out. It, it, if your child is is not touching base with us, and they just you just they just haven't, and because we can't make them get on a meeting, and you know you always everybody has the choice now to stay virtual if they choose, even when we come back. So if you choose to stay virtual, or you are virtual now and you have no choice, please touch base with us. We we you know we need you. We need your effort. We just need you to just just listen. Just open up, make and uh, engage with us, and then it's our job to try to get you the rest of the way. And we will. So I ask parents continue to work with us. And if, if you haven't so much up to this point, then let's start next week. Reach out to us and let, let's see what we can do so your, your child doesn't fall any further behind than they already have. And we know this is not ideal. Uh, we, I'm not even going to pretend to say this is as good as in person five days a week. It's not. But we've learned a lot. We're better than we were. I do think better days are coming. So just Hang in there again is not the word we're looking for, but that's what that's what comes to mind is just just hang in there. We do care about your kids. Uh, we have fed over one million, well over a million meals. Oh my since goodness! Since it started, and we yeah. delivered them. So, Joe Cooper, your staff, uh, Kim Dukes, your group of bus drivers, well done. So, I'm proud of our folks. I will say this: I didn't come on here just to brag on our folks all the time. I want to appreciate parents and all that too. But I am proud of our folks. I know the stress they're under. I know their heart for kids. I know what they're trying to do, and their hands are kind of tied. So I just feel fortunate to be in Muhlenberg with as much support as I feel I've got with staff and with community and parents. So I, I just thanks thanks for hanging in there with us. So we're going to get to better times, and I think it's close. Well, thanks to everyone for tuning in and hanging in there with us for our kickoff to season two, believe it or not, of Six <laughs> Feet Apart. Backed by popular demand. Or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure somebody was demanding <laughs> something. But uh, we're, we're excited to be back uh, with you again yeah. this season and to share uh, a little bit of what's going on in our community. Uh, our big thanks to Greenville Tourism for all their support and all our sponsors for their support of what we do here at Felix E. Martin Jr. Hall. It's TJ. I'm Sean. Thanks for joining us again. Our thanks to Muhlenberg County Superintendent Robbie Davis. Thanks to you for joining us six feet apart. Mm -hmm.